Okay, another important concept related to stoichiometry is the mole. All right, so when you hear that word, you might think of, you know, a, a brown spot on someone's face or a kind of weird underground animal, but in chemistry, there's a different thing that we call the mole. So you're going to learn what that is and what the purpose of it. And by the end of class, you, you are able to compare how many atoms or molecules you have given a certain number of moles. You've got this down. So we have a predicament of atoms being super tiny and they also have different masses. All right, so like hydrogen is the lightest mass atom. Um, I don't even know what the heaviest mass one is, but I mean, we've got some, hydrogen has a mass of one. We've got other atoms that have masses well over 200. All right, so mass isn't something we can use to do stoichiometry with. We need, we need some sort of variable that is the same regardless of how many, or sorry, how much each different atom weighs. All right. Um, atoms are tiny, so it's not like we want to count how many atoms we have, because one, we can't even see them. So it's hard to get an accurate count. Plus, you'd be dealing with gigantic numbers. All right. So somebody came up with a, a value called the mole that is kind of similar to the idea of a dozen. All right. So you're probably familiar with the fact that if you go to a donut shop or a bagel shop and you order a dozen, you get 12, all right? Or a dozen eggs, there's 12 eggs, all right? So a dozen means there's 12, regardless of what you're dealing with, all right? You can have a dozen bowling balls, you can have a dozen feathers, all right? And we know feathers and bowling balls have different weights, but if we say I have a dozen of them, you know exactly how many you have. A mole is just like that. It's a package. It's a, it's a given number of how many, and you can use this for atoms or molecules, that we have. So, a mole is a lot bigger than a dozen. It is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Write this number down. All right, you need to know this. This is a huge, huge number, like more stars than are in our galaxy recorded number, more molecules or more cells than are in your body, all right? Because this 10 to the 23rd, that means it's 6 with 23 numbers after it. The first three are going to be 022, but then there's going to be 20 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so it's a six and then 23 numbers afterwards. So if you want to compare this to some numbers that you are familiar with, all right, a thousand has three zeros, all right, a million has six zeros, a Billion has nine zeros. All right, so that would go there. All right, a trillion. So if you want to think about like the debts that countries and stuff like that have, oops, a trillion is going to be. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve zeros. All right, and we're still huge compared to that, and that's just because atoms are so teeny tiny. All right. Interestingly enough, a mole of atoms is something that you probably could see in the palm of your hand if you had a mole of iron. You could actually hold that in your hand and see it. And it wouldn't be so overpoweringly big that you couldn't hold on to it or something like that. A mole of iron is 55 grams. All right? And it's just because these are such tiny little particles. For us to really talk about them and use them in meaningful amounts, we have to deal with this much. 
right? Because we can't, we really can't talk about single iron atoms reacting with single oxygen molecules. When reactions happen, they're going to be happening in quantities of moles, all right? Some other things to make note of here, um, a mole is abbreviated, M-O-L, all right? Also be able to recognize this number was created by this guy. This is Amadeus Avogadro, so the number is named after him, all right? So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, the number of particles in a mole, is called Avogadro's number. So when you use this term, all right, is... You might have, if you're kind of converting between, you know, how many atoms you have and how many moles, all right? So, it, you know, if you, if you know you have a mole of copper atoms, then that means you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or vice versa. If you know you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms, you know you have a mole of copper atoms, okay? Something to keep in mind is there are a few elements that form diatomic molecules in their, in their pure state, all right? These elements, you don't find them solo. You always find them paired. So oxygen is one of them, hydrogen, nitrogen, and all of the halogens. So pay attention to the question when you are answering how many atoms you have, all right? So if you have a mole of oxygen molecules, a mole of O2s, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd O2s, and you have twice that, 1.204 times 10 to the 24th just O's. All right? So pay attention to what the question's asking you for. If it's asking you for molecules, you get to ignore the two. If it's asking you for atoms, you gotta multiply by two, okay? This is where the tests and quizzes in this unit like to trick people, is using one of these diatomic molecule elements to throw you off and end up having you give, you, having you give an answer that is either half the size or two times too big or something like that. So you pay really, really close attention to whether or not it's asking you about molecules which means you're counting how many O2s, or atoms, where you're counting how many O's, which means you have to multiply by two. Um, some good numbers to remember, because this is, this is not an easy number to deal with in your calculator. And honestly, the, the tests and quizzes kind of keep you to easy multiples of a mole. So some good ones for you to remember and have written down. All right, so if one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, a half a mole is going to be half of that. So that's going to be 3.011 times 10 to the 23rd. All right. Um, two moles is going to be twice that, which is going to be 12.044 times 10 to the 23rd, which is incorrect scientific notation. We've got to move the decimal one more time. So that's where that 1.204 times 10 to the 24th comes from. All right. And then we've got three times, which is going to be 18.066 times 10 to the 23rd. Correcting our scientific notation makes that 1.807, because that's going to round up, times 10 to the 24th. And four is going to be... 24.088 times 10 to the 23rd, and which will be 2.409 times 10 to the 24th. All right, so I highly recommend writing these down, keeping them somewhere is kind of a cheat sheet, so that if you see, you know, oh, you have one point. 807 times 10 to the 24th molecules of water, how many moles is that? You're going to tell me, oh, I've got three moles. Okay? So, just some questions that you may run into, all right? Like this one. If you have two moles of iron atoms, how many iron atoms do you have? 
So this is directly using that list that we had before. It's going to be 2 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So that's going to be B. All right. Then this second one, think it through a little bit. Pause the video if you need some time to get through that. But given this reaction, how many oxygen molecules do you need to make two moles of MgO? So looking at our reaction, this reaction makes two moles of MgO right off the back. because so that's what this two tells us. So I just need to know how many moles of oxygen need to go into this. All right. So. I need one mole O2 to make two moles MgO. That's what my reaction tells me. So now my question is, is how many molecules of that is it? All right, since the question is asking about molecules, that means I treat it like the whole O2, not just O's. It didn't ask me about atoms, so I, so I can just treat this as, as one entity. So I just do 1 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so the answer there would be A. If the question had asked about atoms, then you got to take that O2 break it apart into its two O's, so you have to multiply by two. So that, if it asked about atoms, it'd be twice as big, and it would be answer B. All right, if this part's not making sense, talk to me, because I know you're going to see questions kind of like this. You've got to be able to, you know, know what to focus on if you're being asked about molecules versus atoms.